Hello everyone, uh, Matt Ort here uh, for the 2024 year in review of the Wisconsin healthcare movement. I've done these now, this is my third year in a row, so I'll put the links into the last couple of years. It's interesting to go back and watch the last couple of years and just see the fast progress that Wisconsinites are making in free market healthcare through the work of many, many people we are have perhaps have become the model state for the nation in free market healthcare, and so here I am today uh, with my friend the Beast. As always, he goes with me everywhere I go, and uh, we're at Rib Mountain State Park, which is in Rib Mountain, Wisconsin, about 10 minutes from where I live. It's a ski hill, um, and also uh, has trails and things. I don't ski; I prefer my bones unbroken. Uh, and had a little running with a tractor a few years ago that changed that. But uh, it's one, one of a uh, few sports I've never done and probably too old to try. Uh, but it's about 15 degrees here today, so if I look cold, it's because I am. And the wind chill, I think, is below 10. Uh, so we do our best in Wisconsin. Wisconsin's actually one of the coldest states in the nation. I think we're at 8 officially, but the difference between 2 and 8 is about 2 degrees. So we're right up there with the coldest states. Uh, but a pretty cool place to li live, as you can see, very scenic, a beautiful country. And uh, I think today, though, I'll, I'll try to make it through this. My goosebumps have goosebumps. And uh, what's one thing that's really cool about Wisconsin is that we, uh, we do have four seasons. So it's, uh, and sometimes even in one day, uh, we'll have four seasons. We'll have the heat on in the morning and the AC on in the afternoon or something like that. But really enjoy living here. And as you've heard me probably say before, Wisconsin is just a, a, a state of great people, warm hearts and cold hands, uh, but really many unique things about Wisconsin. Uh, number one in cheese in the nation, number two in dairy in the nation, uh, number one in drinking in the nation. Uh, don't even try, like like nine out of the 10 cities are, the, are Wisconsin. I think the other one is like Dubuque, right across the Mississippi River. Number one in snowmobiles in the nation. And so I'm hoping to do some snowmobiling this year. And, uh, and then uh, what this today is about, uh, number fourth or fifth, uh, number fourth worst healthcare cost state in the nation. So 2024 was a very busy year for me, a very busy year for self-fund health. Uh, I was actually in 26 cities. I've got one more next week to Burlington, Wisconsin, speaking on big stages and sharing the good news of the free market healthcare movement. We also did our first big conference. The last couple of years, we did five or six regional events each year, traveling around the state and lighting brush fires and educating. But this year we had a big conference. We called it Don't Feed the Beast Conference in, uh, in Milwaukee. And uh, that was fun, it had a great turnout and had a great impact. Um, so one question would be, you know, how is, are things getting better or getting worse? I would say they're getting, they're, we're on track to make them better in Wisconsin. But uh, uh, here's a quote from Sean Greminger. Uh, really to answer that question. The unending cycle of year-over-year -year cost increases for employers and employees and their families has long exceeded sustainability and adds real stress to the economy, said Sean Greminger, National Alliance President and CEO. These uncontrolled costs directly lead to smaller raises, lost jobs, and the inability of working families to afford care and is perhaps the primary driver of health inequity. And for employers, it's no longer just about cost control, it's about survival. So we see cases with, and we're seeing this in Wisconsin with school districts and counties and public entities, they're actually having to do refer referendums because they're running out of money. And, and there's all sorts of reasons on those referendums, but the healthcare is really the big reason why they're struggling financially, they're in the red. We're seeing with especially smaller companies, I think it's gonna rise in number as, as this goes on, smaller companies, that's why the first na uh, line of the book is save your company, because if you, lose your health plan, you can no longer afford it, you might lose your people. If you lose your people, you can no longer sustain as a business. So this is more than just healthcare or the healthcare industry. This is really about our economy and, and the sustainability of Wisconsin communities. And so um, one question that we often get, and it's really important to clarify is, this is kind of a friend, friendly caricature of the beast, but who is this beast, right? I was speaking in Dallas and I had someone came, come up to me and say, I spoke with a hospital CEO yesterday and he said, I'm just trying to figure out who this beast is. Am I the beast? And so the beast isn't any one person or entity or we try not to generalize, uh, but the beast is someone or, or a company who um, breaks the golden rule regularly and intentionally. They, they intentionally put money ahead of people, costing people their lives and their, 
and put them in financial ruin and bankruptcy after they've worked their whole life to, to buy a house and they garnish wages and put liens on the homes and all sorts of things. You can see cap that in Wisconsin and see how many lawsuits the hospitals have against these nonprofit hospitals have against citizens. It's in the thousands by each county of active lawsuits. These are this is what we're trying to fix. This is not a win for the hospital. It's not a win for the people. It, uh, it's unsustainable. And so really in the middle we see what we call the BUCA, B-U-C-A now. There's no more H on the end. They just went to the government side of Humana, but Blue Cross, Blue Shield, United, Cigna, and Aetna, we call the BUCA, are really causing most of the problems in the middle. They're kind of the, the common difficulty, if you will. On one side, with the hospitals, they're causing all sorts of excessive coding requirements and, all, and things like that, and, cause, and really causing prices to rise, and they control the hospitals via patient flow. If the hospital doesn't do what the BUCA says, then they, they lose their patient flow, and if they lose their patient flow, they might not be around. So we see that influence. On the other side, we see the influence on the brokerage houses, especially the big houses have built those businesses on the, on the revenues from commissions and overrides and a whole bunch of other income trails that uh, if they were to try to walk away, in many cases, they can cut off their plans, they can do all sorts of things to them, and it creates conflicts of interest. If your broker's uh, compensation is not aligned with success of your plan, if your, if your brokerage house makes more when your plan gets worse, we have a compensation misalignment, we have a conflict of interest of recommending things that are hurting your company but helping their pocketbook. So we're seeing lots of, we're seeing hospitals start to talk, we're seeing hospitals, we want them to come over to the free market side we're seeing brokerage houses uh, come over to the free market side where we can align compensation and we can all win together, folks. We're not against anyone in this movement, uh, but we are for communities and we are for values of sustainability. And so there's a quote and I, I wanna share, I'm really excited what Wisconsinites have been doing. It's pretty amazing actually, but there's a quote by a guy named Buck Minster Fuller, never met him, not even sure if he's alive, honestly, but this is the quote that describes uh, what we're about and so it says you never change something by fighting the existing reality to change something build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete so we realize that this healthcare industrial complex as we call it is broken and some say it's not broken at all it's working just as it's been designed but what we can't do is we can't fix if say if a hospital has gone off track we certainly can't fix that if, a, if big insurance has gone off track we can't fix that and if a big brokerage house has gone off track, we can't fix that. In fact, they would, we would say that maybe it's not a problem for them because they're making truckloads of money. There was some stats I saw earlier uh, from Preston Alexander that said the margins for big insurance for the Bucas is $100 million per day, friends. Where's that money coming from? And there's also, I haven't, I don't know if we can verify this, but I've seen research that said there's seven insurance lobbyists per representative in Washington, seven to one. And so that's all stuff that, that Americans are paying for as well that's actually working against them. So we talk about this idea of, say, opening up the free market, that, that shoppers are trapped within the walls of this monopoly, and what we need to do is break down those walls and we need to provide alternatives. So this model of this idea of creating a new model that provides alternatives, I believe, is the long-term solution. And when we have a true free market, the sellers have to have high quality and affordable prices or they're not around. Just like a restaurant, just like a store that, that sells TVs, and just like a car lot, they have to have high quality, good service, and uh, low prices or the free market will eat their lunch. It's the healthiest regulation we can have in a natural way. And so what's Wisconsin been doing? Well, it's interesting. And the first DPC that I track back is 2010 for Wisconsin. We had one or two. We have two of the largest ones today, Reform Medicine and Solstice Health, that started in 2012. They're growing today. And so uh, I got into this movement. I got in it with Meryl Steele as a VP of HR in 2016. But there was an article in the in a Madison Journal that said in 2020 we had 15 DPCs. You can Google that article if you like. So just four years ago, we had 15 DPCs. If you look at last year's video, which I did from a dairy farm, uh, and some, you'll get some of my humor as well if you haven't seen that, we had 97 DPCs. Today, friends, we have 130 DPC. What's a DPC? It's called direct primary care. We talk about direct care. These are independent primary care clinics that doctors who are just as frustrated as the buyers have left these big systems and started their own practices. So there's 131 independent clinics today run by doctors who used to be in those health systems. 
who said enough is enough. We talk about DSC. This is the other part of direct care, direct specialty care. Just three years ago, we, we didn't have any, uh, very little to any of these independent uh, practices that we see today in imaging. We have imaging covered in the whole state. We have infusion covered in the whole state. We have surgery covered for about 90% of the state. And we, of course, you can travel two hours and it's covered, but we're talking local care. We have colonoscopy starting to branch out and be covered. We have oncology. We have an independent cardiologist. We have at least two now independent cardiology practices in the state. We even have two micro hospitals. So as we, as we build this new system, we juxtapose this new system alongside, we're able to offer, our goal is to be able to offer everything in free market competition and let them fight it out for the best care and the best price. And no longer are the days where you have to wait six months to get into primary care where you've forgotten what your ailment was by then. And folks, that's, that's not good service. So we have, we have high prices that aren't shared and then we have also poor accessibility. That's just no good for Wisconsin or any other state in the nation. And so as I come to kind of a closing point here, uh, the healthcare best practice group, which I think we had four people in the first meeting, and the second year we had a couple hundred people. I can tell you today, folks, this is not a collaborative group anymore. This is an email list, but if you'd like to be on that, let me know and receive a monthly update of the newsletter. Today we have over 18,000 people on that list, and some of that is national, most of it's still Wisconsin, to get updates on this Wisconsin free market movement. And so uh, one of the things you may wonder, why did I come to Rib Mountain State Park? I'm not a skier, uh, but the, what I wanted to share is if you look behind me and we can kind of pan and see this, see this amazing view from up here. Um, one, uh, one thing I wanna talk about is vision. So, right, if you, look, if you look down there, we see roads and we see individual buildings and we see houses you could, we can dig into those weeds, we can dig into, there's lots of detail happening down there, but it's important sometimes to come up high and see the big picture. And the big picture of this movement is that as we grow DPC plus DSC and employers get educated, uh, this is what's really gonna change this game. This is a model for the rest of the nation. Now I've been doing this now, this new game, I've been in HR almost 25 years for manufacturing companies. I've been doing this new game about nine years where my real learning curve started. And I can tell you there were aha moments in the third year and the fifth year and still today. So this takes time. Uh, Vince Lombardi, as, as people in Wisconsin know, um, the pack attack, really making it title town. Vince Lombardi said, someone said, what do I do when I get in the end zone? What, in other words, what do I do when I succeed? He said, act like you've been there before. And so I think we want to stay humble in this. We're making incredible progress, but we need to stay humble. I have a friend that says, be proud. Of, I'm proud of my humility and his sense of humor, of course. But so we need to stay humble and, and stay and make sure we repeat often that we're not against anyone in this movement. We're, we're for certain things like transparency and trust and value and accessibility and high quality care, but we're not against anyone. And so what we're really doing is changing the culture of healthcare, the way that we purchase healthcare. Culture is an unconscious norm. I've done this for 25 years, this, this transformative leadership. Uh, but you start out with this norm and you wanna get to this norm and we need to make it the new unconscious norm. So that's our goal. When free market healthcare, when shopping for healthcare and seeing prices and getting a, a hip, a, a joint replacement for 19,000 instead of 60, 70, 80, I've seen as much as 150,000 where you get a surprise bill later. And we get into primary care in a day or two instead of six months. This is what needs to be the new norm. When we achieve the new norm, that's when we really succeeded. And so, as I mentioned, I was in 26 cities this year, but next year I have a few on the, on the schedule. So certainly if you wanna collaborate and, and move the movement in your state or your area, look me up. Uh, I have an employer story that I think is, uh, is powerful as I'm living it out and doing my best to help our country and our state. Uh, so I'm in uh, uh, Burlington, Wisconsin, actually, in a week or so, December 12th. I'm in Rockford, Illinois, what looks to be January 27th, Troy, Miss Michigan, and February 20th. And we've got a couple of things brewing for Oklahoma City and Nebraska, but not scheduled yet. So this is uh, really what I've dedicated the rest of my career to do. So once again, let me just say great job, Wisconsinites. It's an awesome state with amazing people. And thank you for having that independent thinking and that courage to go out and fix this problem that's not going to fix itself. The government's not gonna fix it for us. 
and neither is the industry because the industry is getting very wealthy on this situation. So it's going to take physicians and the buyers and employers and all of us together to just find win-wins. We're not out to hurt anyone. We're not out to reverse the win-lose. We're to find a win-win situation. So let me take this chance to wish uh, you and your family a Merry Christmas and thank you for all the support and all you've done and a Happy New Year and God bless and here's to uh, 2025.